Hello, in this lecture we are going to look at data abstraction. We, I gave you a brief overview of data abstraction and what did we say there? We said that, so here is our image.cc file which reads and writes BMP images, right? And here is the main program which is going to use this file, image.cc file. And when, it, when the main program wants to read a BMP file, it says, okay, it calls the function read BMP and gives it a file name as, uh, as a string. The file name is passed to the read BMP function as a string. And what it returns back is a structure BMP star, okay, a pointer to a BMP structure. And BMP structure is here, we have already written. So the BMP structure has a header information, some the DIB header information, and some other header information. No need to worry if you don't uh, remember it. And it also has an image structure and the image structure basically talks about what is the uh, what is the picture going to be what at every pixel of the picture uh, what color it is right and we said that this image picture we have was of the type uh, red green blue RGB the, uh, a, a pixel can be of is encoded by red green blue RGB values and each of this value is uh, it, takes 8 bits and therefore this RGB together takes 24 bits. And so this, image, so this is for a pixel, one pixel takes 24 bit and then you have this huge image with uh, length and width. So if the length is 100 and the width is 100, the total uh, size will be 100 into, 100 into uh, 24 bits. So that many bits will be allocated for this image structure, right. And so this is, this is going to be my uh, struct BMP and <coughs> uh, so this is actually a struct, a pointer. A pointer to an image structure and one image structure was uh, 24 bit so it's it's a pointer to an image structure and one image structure was a 24 bit structure right uh, or three bytes now <clears throat> and we said that okay so this is what our uh, read BMP does but now this uh, all BMP files do not store a pixel by 24 bits so there are uh, images which store uh, one pixel information by 16 bits some by 32 bits etc etc now I want to write a program, now, so this program is currently running and tomorrow I come and I say okay I, uh, let me just go and modify it and I, I, I'm going to modify this function and I'm going to write a new function which can also take read from 16 bits and 32 bit uh, images, right. And so I go, I'm going to modify this function, this function is going to now read both 16 bit, 32 bits, 24 bits, all kinds of images all these images and then it's going to return. So what is what will it return in that sense? It can't return a struct PMP this because this is a struct PMP 24 bits. So let, right, this struct PMP returns only a 24 bits image structure. But so uh, there has to be a new structure which is struct 32 bit and it will have to return that. But the but the but this return type is struct BMP stuff. And the main function is calling this. How, how did this main function know about this function? Because there is this header file in between. So there is this header file which which takes in uh, which is which basically has the type of this that is its return type is struct BMP star and it uh, takes a, a file name. So the main function looks at this uh, this function and calls this function and then you can think of this as now uh, being this function being called from the library that's how it works. But now if this function, this function is right now returning a struct BMP star of which uses 24 bit image <coughs> and if you want to now change it to 32 bit, it can't return it, right? Because the main function is taking this structure. So there, so this is what, so the, uh, th this is creating a problem, right? In, and th we said that now, the, see as far as the main function is concerned, it need not worry about this struct BMP at all. It, it does not want to know this, what is the stack PMP, whether it's 24 bits or 32 bits, you need not know this fact. But still there is this kind of, the, uh, but still uh, it's, it's having this structure in its hand and it can't do anything about it because uh, people can't modify this fact because uh, it has to return the same structure. Now, right, so you should think that, so there are multiple main functions which have been using this. Uh, 
using the same file. So tomorrow I can't have an image to CC which is version 2.0. I can't release a version version 2.0 because already version 1.0 many people are using this return type and uh, building on top of it. Now if I build a version 2.0 uh, with a different structure return all these programs are not going to work. Right, because because they are all expecting this particular structure, and now if you return a stack with 32 bits, all these previous programs are not going to work, and your header file will also change. So uh, this won't work at all. Uh, so what we wanted was we wanted data abstraction. That's what uh, conceptually we want a data abstraction. In the sense, main main uh, program need not worry, should not worry about how what is the type of stack PMP, how many what are the contents of stack BMP? The main function need not worry and it should not be worried. It should not be burdened by these thoughts, right? And if that flexibility is there, if there is a way we can uh, build a program like that, that's good because that gives me both the, uh, it gives me a tremendous advantage in the sense, then I can modify this image CC, right? Then I will be able to modify this image.cc and then get this uh, get data abstraction also even if we modify it and still it works so how can we enable that so uh, there are some ways in c you can uh, work around with this uh, um, i mean and uh, i can just tell so you can use something called as in union etc for example but i don't want to go into all, uh, but but there are but even if it's an union there are there are issues uh, you, you, uh, uh, the flexibility is kind of limited so the, but there are other ways for example um, there are ways to work around, but we will go to C++ because that gives me an easier way to deal with the situation, okay? <clears throat> uh, gives me a more natural way to fix this problem. And right, now before we go into that, let me give, me, give you a second reason why we would uh, require a data abstraction. Now, so the second reason is the following. <laughs> so imagine that the same program is being accessed by, let's say, thousands of people. or uh, it, It's part of this image.cc is part of some uh, a big project and some this is some part of it, right? Now, so there are these main functions which call this, call this function and gets the struct BMP structure back. Here's the one thing. Now, if it gets a stuck BMP back, the programmer has access to the contents of stuck BMP. It, it, he has access to the header. He has access to the DAB header. He has access to the image structure, etc. So the contents of the structure, he has access to. What do I mean? So the main inside the main program, I can write. I can simply write. Uh, I, uh, so uh, I, uh, I can write. So stuck BMP star. So some uh, small BMP, and I am going to read BMP. And then I pass a file name, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and I have in this small, small BMP, I have the structure information. So the entire image information is there. Now, once I have this structure, I have I have power over it. In the sense, I can I can modify it. I can write BMP header. Uh, you can modify it, and you can write zero is equal to let's say x. Okay, so this kind of modification is allowed and uh, the, the main programmer can now modify these things. Now, is it good or bad? That's the first question. So the main programmer has like control over the data. Now, in one way you see that, okay, this is good because, uh, because the main programmer can also now uh, can, can see what, how it looks like and then do what is required, etc. But imagine if it's like a lot of people or thousands of people are working on it and you give this kind of flexibility to the user and what can he do? He just modifies some things and then he calls the right BMP and then uh, it, the right BMP is going to create an error because it's uh, it's going to write this a different, you just modified the header and now you write it, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, I'm not saying the, the main function, the person who was working in the main function purposefully did it. He might have done it for various reasons. He might have just done because he might have thought that, okay, if I do something like this, things I can do something much faster. So let me just do it and uh, do that. 
he the, the main programmer may not even know how these functions work right and so uh, he may not know the internal details but he just modified so that some things in this main he can make it work faster okay so he he has a, once you give that flexibility to the main programmer you don't know what he will do with it and that can create a, a, a problem inside this function when these functions execute so the complete control over this data is not with these functions that's the main thing so the one who wrote image.cc ideally the one who wrote image.cc should have the complete control over the data and uh, the functions because only then he can ensure that things work perfectly correctly but if you you are giving this data back to this main guy the main guy has flexibility to change it and then he can't be sure that things work well and <clears throat> this is uh, you know uh, yeah, this is one issue. So now uh, uh, this, so I, uh, it's not even about uh, the main programmer being a, a, a being an adversary trying to corrupt it or anything. So the the, the main programmer can be a, I mean, it, it can be an unintentional bug when thousands of people are working. He might have just felt that okay, this is fine, right? Uh, so what do we do? Uh, so th this is one. This is uh, this is so so, so giving uh, power to uh, the main programmer. Uh, there is some problem. Now you can say that okay. So uh, you can tell you can maybe write a comment here saying that okay you should not uh, don't modify the structure. Uh, the main programmer should not modify the structure, etc. Don't do that. Uh, please don't do that because I will be using it and uh, don't do such things. Okay. Now that that's one approach to do. But now that's kind of trusting. Can you trust? Uh, the, the the main programmers not to do something. Uh, that's a that's a tricky question. Can you trust something uh, when the, so the, it can happen that the main programmer is like there and he knows oh if I just modify that uh, array, uh, things are going to work here. So I don't have to write some big code to do that. Uh, if I, let me just modify it slightly and do that. Uh, and, and he might so he might be tempted to do that and then uh, things could go wrong here. So here is a story about trusting. Uh, so this is a, a institute in India, which uh, this is something I know of, and here's a story about trusting. So here's this institute in India. It's a it's a true story. It's a it's an institute in India, and it decided that okay, let let let's have have a trusting environment, and so, so it, they decided that okay, so the library. Uh, will be such that like people can just come, uh, anyone can just come, take a book and go and then you just return back after 30 days or uh, I don't know, 45 days or something like that. Uh, you are supposed to return back by that time. Now, so, uh, the, so it's going on like that. Okay, first few days things would go well, right? And uh, what would happen in the end? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously it, it was an audacious uh, attempt. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. People did not return the books on time, and maybe just did not return the books. And it's it's not because they are, uh, I mean, uh, like the students or faculties that were thieves or anything. It's just that it's it, it, it. I mean, somehow you you might just miss the date, or you might have just taken the book and just totally forgotten about it, right? And so there can be multiple reasons by which you you don't go according to what the rules were set. And uh, the the institute then has to go back to uh, a setting of uh, where usually how you see in a library with with a library in charge etc. <coughs> now uh, so yeah, th that's the fault with uh, uh, building a system with a uh, with with a trusting setup. Now obviously uh, you, you uh, the, now the bar is raised here in the sense that now you know. If you have to take a book now from that library, it's it's stealing. Until now, it was not stealing because it's, it it can be because you forgot to do something, right? So the bar is now raised. That's the same same kind of strategy we would like to use do here. The bar we are going to raise the bar for data abstraction, right? So okay, so we have seen now two two reasons why data abstraction is good. Uh, one is uh, the the main programmer won't be able to. Uh, I mean, we should we should have a system where the main programmer cannot see what each of these things are and then modify it. 
And second reason is that uh, we, we should have the flexibility to change these whatever is being returned, right? These uh, the the image contents whatever is returned the the one who write image.cc should should have the flexibility to change it so that he can modify the data according to the needs of the uh, according to needs. So uh, so this comes to data abstraction and um, the way to do data abstraction in C++ is by using classes. Okay. So that's uh, uh, since you have seen uh, the Python programming this is exactly same as classes in Python. Maybe there are some few syntactical differences and how you write or things like that there are differences but the, the main conceptual idea of an object oriented uh, way to uh, to write programs these are all the same conceptually in, in whether in C++ or in uh, Python or even other object oriented programming languages like Java etc. <coughs> now so let's see how you can write the same thing in a class way. The way to write the same thing, our image program in C++ will be as follows. You will write, so let me first write the, the class for the BMP and then we'll have a separate main function. Okay. So the class will have, let me call it BMP. and it will have its own the, the data which is required. So the data here will be a structure for, the class is going to have the structure information. So the header structure information. So first I should have, so it will also have the image information and the image was, what we had was struct uh, let me say the what, what was the pointer so it was a struct image or something right and the th these are the the data in this class and then you will have functions basically read So read uh, the file and okay. So the class is uh, to define this. The class will. Uh, th there is an open braces and there is a cl closed braces followed by a semicolon. <coughs> now, the functions are written inside. The, uh, this is one way to write it. So there are multiple ways to write uh, uh, these functions, and we, these things we'll see in a lab session. But uh, now, what is the difference in this? So if, if, few things we'll try to understand first. Uh, what is what? What is the difference in this read function compared to the read function we wrote there uh, earlier? So in this read function, the read takes a, a file name, that's right? so obviously it has to take the file name and then it, inside the, uh, the function there will be a read, it, it reads the data and rather than returning the structure, right, rather than returning the structure, it's just going to send an int which, uh, which the int is going to basically say whether it's going to be, uh, the, the, the read was successful or not. It could have well have been a void function, uh, void return, that is a no return, but uh, uh, but it's it's better to keep an int return to say whether the uh, the read was successful or not. So that's, that's the only reason for me to keep int, to return the success or not. But uh, earlier, if you noticed, the return was a, uh, was a BMP structure and uh, we are not doing that, we are not returning that. Why? Where is that information now going to be stored? When you read, read, read everything, the header and the image, the pixel data, where, where are they going to be stored? They are going to be stored in the, in the class itself. The class has the, has those things inside it. So the class has the structure, image, and the header extra inside it. Okay, <clears throat> now, 
so this is now uh, in some way the the so all this image uh, all this information is now stored inside this class that's one main thing now and so similarly there is a write function right so the what is the difference in the write function the write i just have the file name in the write but i am not sending in the earlier write function i also have to send the bmp information the structure bmp structure information to write that contents into it but now i don't do that i just pass the file name why why don't i have to pass uh, pass the structure information it's already there in the class okay so whatever is read from this class function is going to be written into this classes uh, the structure so this the, the memory will be allocated here and it's going to be stored there and similarly when it needs to write it's going to write from this structure right what whatever information is contained here it's going to write so i don't have to pass anything or i, I don't want to get anything it's all hidden inside the class so now the main program will will just be like this the main program we just need to say okay uh, bmp uh, let me just say bmp okay it's it has just created a bmp and it it needs to now read it'll just say bmp dot read whatever the file name okay now it needs to convert it to black and white so you can just say bmp dot convert to black and white that's that's that was one of the function we had so you can have a function here which says uh, let me just write it so so there is a function there which says convert to black and white okay and now so i so it's bmp dot convert to black and white so i i'm not passing any information there it's just bmp contains this information right and and finally i can do a write i can write and give a file name now this converted bmp the black and white information oh what will this convert to bw do convert the, it will convert into a black and white information and that picture will be stored here in this image itself okay the original image is now replaced by this black and white image and bmp write when it writes we are passing a file name when it writes it's 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 going to write a black and white file now as you could see so can, can you see the data abstraction here the main programmer can't know does not know what is here it does not know what is in the bmp it does not have to know this fact now if you want to later change it to a 32 bits you are free to change it here it's not passed here to the main programmer in that sense so the anyone can wants to modify it he, he can modify it in the in the functions he can modify in the data part he can modify anywhere okay and this is one advantage of this um doing this class uh, building it as a class the data abstraction is, uh, uh, you, you get the data abstraction and uh, next property is that the, the 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 main user does not know how this entire structure is now stored how he can't he does not know whether it is stored as a structure or whether it is stored as an array or a pointer he has no idea earlier he knew right in the earlier method the main programmer knew whether it's, it's stored as an image stored as an uh, as a pointer and it's dynamically allocated etc 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 and i could have modified i can i can go to the ith location i can modify it etc he could he could have done any of these things earlier now he does not even know what is inside this class right and therefore he can't do anything he can't modify he does not know which is the ith uh, what is what is the ith pixel everything he can't go and check that function there earlier he could have just gone and seen what is the ith pixel he can't do that unless there is a function here which provides that information that's not done now <clears throat> there's a small catch here which i did uh, uh, let me just mention that also 
uh, we, uh, the, the class, the one who wrote the class has to do one more thing, which I didn't mention. So let's let's do that. Now I said that uh, the main programmer can do the read, can can call the function read, can call the function convert, can, can call the function write. He can he or she can call all these three functions. Why can he call that function? Because the one who wrote the class BMP has given him permission to do that. And how can he give permission? To give permission, he has to write public here, which means that this these functions are public. Anyone can call this function. So he has to give that permission. On the other hand, should he give this uh, access to these that uh, structures as public? Should he give, uh, should he allow uh, uh, an access like, let's say, BMP dot header should this access be given it's it's up to the programmer to do that but in our current understanding we should not give so in that case if we do not should not give the programmer should have written private here okay so these two this is private and only this can be accessed only from inside this okay and these are public these functions are public and therefore it can be called from outside that's that's the thing so the pro the one who wrote bmp uh, the the class has now act, now can decide which functions are private and which which functions are public and the programmer can now call the public functions and this this is brings about the abstraction uh, why uh, isn't it clear that why why it brings about uh, the abstraction because now the the main programmer does not know how the data is uh, stored because it's it's completely private. So he does not know how it's stored as an array, as a list or whatever it is. He has no idea as a pointer. What way is it stored? It's, it's stored as two, two structures. He does not know how it is going to be stored, right? And he does not have to know, uh, right? And the class programmer can ensure that fact. On the other hand, he has provided access to these functions, right? So th th that's the abstraction. Now, even the function implementation, he does not know, but he knows that he can call this function. The windows is open. So the window is here, which the, the window is basically only these two functions, public and convert and write. So this will be the header file can contain these, uh, uh, these function, function types so that the user can call those functions. So finally, now you understand what is private data type and public. So it's it's uh, one thing you can know is that you could have made any uh, data type to be public or private and you could have made any function to be private or public. So even functions could have been private and the user won't be able to call that function. But internally you can call and inside any one function you can call the other private function. So functions can be private or public or data can be private or public. All you have the uh, flexibility to do all those things. Theoretically, this can be called as a abstract data type. Okay, uh, why do I say call that? So this class BMP can be can be called as an abstract data type. We will see. Uh, we'll look at it in more detail in the next lecture. But let's just briefly go through it. An abstract data type is the, in the following sense. I have access to these functions. It's a it's a it's a, it's a data type, right? So just like uh, I had int, float, um, etc., are uh, data types, and stru structures are data types. This class it, it is also a data type, but now it's a, it, I call it as an abstract data type. Why? Because <clears throat> it has abstracted out. The, the main program can only see those things which the BMP class allows it to see. Right. So the, from the, the main's perspective, it only sees the read, convert and write functions. It can only see those things. It it's only sees these three things, read, convert and write. The rest of the things are, are abstracted out. <coughs> Okay, so th that's the, that's the idea with abstraction. It, it the the main program can't see the rest of the rest of it. it. Only these three windows are open to it. Okay, and this is a data type which gives you three operations: read, convert, and write. 
and it, it's, a, it's a data type which gives me these three operations. It's just like your int float data types gives me operations like addition, multiplication, uh, etc. This BMP data type gives me read, convert, write, etc. And but I don't know how this data is stored. Okay, I'm not giving uh, th those information. Therefore, it's called as an abstract data type. And an abstract data type is a uh, is a valuable concept, which we will see in the uh, next lecture. Okay, thank you.